Good morning and welcome to the ODPP Cafe. My name is Anita Onuko. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, I must apologize that we've started late. We've had technical issues, but now they are all sorted. Uh, my apologies and of course apologies from the production team. So this is the ODPP Cafe. It's a show brought to you by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. We are live on Facebook, we are live on YouTube, and we are also on Twitter, though on Twitter we are not uh, running the videos. So on YouTube you can subscribe and follow us at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution Kenya. And also on Facebook, uh, you can also follow us at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution Kenya. Today I'm insisting on the word Kenya because I've discovered when you say Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, it is quite open to any other office from across the continent. But this one, the page ends with Kenya. So Karibu Sana once again, the show is meant to inform, the show is meant to educate you, the show is meant to have, we are meant to have a discussion about the law, what the law says, and of course you can get assistance uh, whether you're in conflict or in contact with the law. Like I say, it's never really about you, but even about the people around you. You can watch the show and have something to say about a situation that faces you. Karibu Sana once again, and as always, we want to start with the highlights from the courts. And our disclaimer, and I like saying it because we really don't give the full picture, we pick a few of the cases from the courts and share with you. And of course, some of the activities that the ODPP has been up to. So Karibu Sana, buckle up, because today we have a very interesting show and a very interesting guest. So I'm going to start with the cases from the courts. And uh, the first case is about the Kimwarer. I keep confusing how to pronounce it, the Aror and Kimwarer scandal. So the High Court yesterday, uh, the Milimani Anti-Corruption High Court, dismissed an application by former Treasury CS Henry Rotich, challenging the charges instituted against him. So in my understanding, he was trying to challenge the legalities around how he was charged, and most especially the charge sheet. But the judge said that uh, he actually affirmed the DPP's position that the charges were properly instituted by the office, which has powers to institute criminal charges under Article 157 of the Constitution. Later in the day, I'm going to just share a bit of information about this on our Twitter handle, so just watch it out. But this was a nod in the right direction for this Aurora and Kim Warren scandal, sort of the, the ref waved play on. So the Aurora and Kim Warren dam case is set for hearing on 28 March 2022. In this case, this uh, the former CS is charged alongside others uh, from from uh, the former Kerry of Valley Development Authority boss David Kimoso, former Chief Economist Kennedy Nyakundi, Jackson Kinyanjui, and Titus Moravi. They are accused of conspiracy to defraud the government of more than 63 mil billion in the Aurora and Kimware dam scandal. So, like I said, I'm going to share some more information on Twitter later on. But again, this also just brings to light how cases delay and some, some of the reasons for delay. So this was one of the reasons, and we hope there's more, there's no more coming, and the case may proceed to its uh to its conclusion. But that again we wait to see. The next case is about an uh, about fraud. A 35-year-old man was charged with using fraudulent means to con medical laboratory technicians across the country. Nico Chenu is alleged to have used fraudulent tricks to induce medical laboratory technicians and technologies around the country to send money to his m account after he falsely pretended that he was in a position to register them with the board. So uh, he, this guy has been charged, he probably tried getting money by, by I think, by false pretense. That's the, the right term. He allegedly committed the offense on diverse dates between January 1st, 2016 and February 2022, 28th, 2022. He denied the charges and before the chief magistrate, Wendy Micheni, and was released on a cash bail of 100,000. The case will be mentioned on 30th March. So uh, that was about fraud. Uh, let me get to the next case. Sorry about that. So the next case is about the, the Boda Boda sexual assault uh, case that took place on Wangare Madai Road. I was corrected, it's no longer called Forest Road. So this is one of those things we watched, I think, last week, and it caused quite an uproar on social and, in fact, even in our daily conversations. So the Boda Boda fugitive, the, the main suspect in the case, Zachary Nyaura Obadia, will remain in custody for 10 more days pending investigations. He was arrested, I think he was trying to escape, he tried, and was arrested if the, what I read was right on social media on the border of Kenya and Tanzania. Obadia was arraigned before Milimani Senior Principal Magistrate Robinson Ondieki, who directed the police to hold Obadia at the Gigiri police station, where the co-accused are currently being held. 
remember this is also what happens sometimes if they feel that you're going to interfere with an investigation then they have a right to hold you until they complete the investigation of course within within reasonable time so obadia is the main suspect in the assault of the woman motorist along wangari Mathai road on march 4th 2022 again this has brought to fore a lot of discussions about how the boda boda guys operate uh, a lot of it is good discussion so that you can streamline the sector and some of it uh, is obviously political we should really try to avoid uh, the next case is about cops who are charged with robbery four men who allegedly to have posed as dci sleuths uh, robbed a man of 145,000 and his phone they were charged with armed robbery the prosecution submitted that joseph ngui and andrew nzioki peter mungeli david mwangi they violently robbed Robert Miano on September 28, 2018 at the Kariobangi area um, in Nairobi while armed with a pistol. So these are cops who, or these are men who posed as DCI officers and robbed someone. They all denied the charges and were released on a 500,000 bond, each with surety of the same amount. And the matter will proceed for hearing on 22nd April. And then finally, and this is now just an activity that took place at the ODPP, and uh, it is actually a segue into our conversation. This week, the ODPP hosted the technical committee meeting of the East Africa Association of Prosecutors and Train and East Africa Association of Prosecutors. I remember, I think on Monday or Tuesday, the tweet we put up was like, did you know? that there's actually an East African Association of Prosecutors. And now do you know it is even wider than East Africa? So that is our conversation for today. And it has been our conversation for most of the week. We've been talking a lot about regional cooperation and uh, illegal wildlife trade. But now we want to look at it from a bigger picture on transnational and organized crime. So the focus of the meeting was on asset recovery, anti-money laundering, and international cooperation in combating wildlife crime and other emerging transnational organized crime quite a mouthful but i learned i learned quite a lot if you saw the post again i think on tuesday i was surprised to see that people actually look for the brains of a giraffe i don't know for what and the teeth of a leopard i mean those are the things that now are part of the seizures that are made when people are arrested uh, engaging in this wildlife trade so for me it was quite an interesting i was a fly on the wall but it was quite interesting for me to listen to the stories so the members of EAP include Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, South Sudan, Somalia, Mozambique, Malawi, Ethiopia, DRC, Djibouti, and Zambia. So like you can see, it is wider now than East Africa and for a good cause. So that said, uh, we, did, uh, we did some interviews uh, while at the workshop uh, this, this week, and I'd just like you to, to have a listen and see what some of the prosecutors from across the region had to say. The East African Association Prosecutors uh, Association is having a four-day workshop uh, training and uh, the training is organized by one of the technical committees of the association. The technical committee is on asset recovery, uh, demand laundering uh, and international uh, crime. So the technical committee, uh, what is happening today is not the whole uh, East African Association of Prosecutors uh, here. but. Uh, on asset recovery, as I have said. So they have met today to deliberate on uh, ways of combating uh, money laundering, uh, transnational organized crime, uh, and ways of cooperating. Um, so pleased to, to come and share with our brother in, in East Africa as a prosecutor. This uh, association helped us a lot. And within now, one of the tools that we, we succeed now is the issue we uh, the the cyber crime uh, act now is out and this is one of the tools will help us in the region uh, to deal with the offenders uh, regarding the issue of uh, wildlife crimes and uh, the offenders is moving up in the region so it needs some tools that to to fight these people. The trainings uh, done over the last, I think, four or five years in the region, uh, not just nationally, but even regionally, uh, through the East Africa Association of Prosecutors, um, which have led to this kind of forums where people can discuss what are the problems 
and create that momentum and push for greater success. And we have already seen the fruits of, of, of uh, this concerted effort. It really helped me greatly because of uh, preparing those mutual legal assistance and where you have to transmit them to the regional countries and they respond with giving you information that will help you in, that helped me in prosecution of such cases. So I feel like, yes, it is a great, um, it's a great network, um, especially where you have to, you create uh, long lasting networks, informal, where you just have to make a call and perhaps once you get the information, then you follow it up with a formal request. So that has really, really assisted uh, my prosecution in counterterrorism matters and uh, wildlife uh, crimes, yes. The International Cooperation has got uh, two main aspects. That is extradition and mutual legal assistance. Uh, extradition is for the suspect who has been uh, accused in one country for a crime and is required in another country. So that is for extradition and mutual legal assistance is for evidence. That is evidence which is in one country and is required in another country. Uh, so that is what is happening today. And the prosecutors from the East African countries are meeting today to deliberate on ways of uh, how to go about international cooperation uh, in these aspects. It's easier to share information and to also receive information that may assist us in prosecution of uh, transnational organized crime. So for me, my assessment is that a good job is being done and the rest of the day we are going to achieve uh, a lot of... Uh, so, so now you can see now the technical committee is going to meet and the, 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 the objective is come up with a, a new constitution, accommodate new members and come up with another strategy for five years. It's a very, very huge kind of achievement. Mashtaka yenye haki na usawa. at uh, the EAP uh, workshop, training workshop that took place in Nairobi. Uh, ODPP was a host. And you can see, um, I wish you could see, there were so many of them from East Africa region. And of course, they were de deliberating about transnational and organized crime. Very interesting conversations. You would be shocked at what was being said there, but... I have two of the most important ones here today for me, and I'm glad to actually host uh, the, the National Prosecutor from Rwanda, the land of a thousand hills, is it? It is. <laughs> <laughs> Karibu sana, and I'd like you to introduce yourself. We are glad to have you on the show. We are privileged to honor you, to, to have you in the show, and we are really honored. Introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Claudine Tushimimana. As you said, I'm a National Prosecutor from Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Uh, works for the National Public Prosecution Authority as the National Prosecutor. <laughs> yeah. So I deal with uh, various crimes uh, before different court, High Court, mm -hmm. Court of Appeal and the uh, Supreme Court, mm -hmm. but most likely international crimes and uh, transnational uh, crimes. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, I'm a member of the Technical Committee of uh, EAAP. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for having most, me. <laughs> most welcome to the show. Thank you. Are you finding Nairobi hot? So hot compared <laughs> to Rwanda. <laughs> Rwanda is cold uh, now. Yeah, it's cold. We are uh, have a running uh, running season, mm -hmm. so it's uh, hot in Nairobi. <laughs> you could easily all of us migrate to go and enjoy the rain. Really? It's really been you're most welcome. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But you're most welcome yeah. to the show, and of course in Kenya. Thank you so I bet much. Kenya is your other home as well because yeah. <laughs> you're here always working, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Gitonga, not new to the show, but we'd be glad if you introduced yourself and tell us exactly your role in the EAP. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Gitonga Moranga. I'm a senior principal of prosecution counsel at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, Kenya. Mm -hmm. But uh, for purposes of the East Africa Association of uh, Prosecutors, I currently am the coordinator of the, of the secretariat mm -hmm. of the EAP. But I'm also uh, the focal point for, for, for Kenya. For Kenya. Yes. So is there a plan to, to change, to rebrand the name from EAP because now you're getting members from as far as Zambia? Yes. So in, in terms of uh, expansion of uh, the association, we were able to bring in uh, five new members who cut across uh, towards the south of Africa. 
uh, that's uh, Malawi, Mozambique, and Zambia. And, uh, and we also have Ethiopia, which is a bit up on uh, coming on board. And it was felt that the, the, the expansion is required for purposes of uh, uh, better coordination, better cooperation, because we are finding that the migration of crime, transnational crimes, is cutting across the, the countries that border the traditional East Africa community. Mm -hmm. And that was the only way we could be able to, to work together towards combating transnational organized yeah, crime. Okay. Uh, therefore, in terms of the name, the name, as you see, was East Africa Association, association because yeah. it was, it, it, the foundation of the association was on the traditional block of Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania. Then it brought in uh, Rwanda, Burundi. Yeah. So those were the uh, initial founding members. Yeah. And then now we brought in South Sudan. Mm -hmm. And now since we are bringing other countries on board, mm -hmm. There's need to change the name to yeah. reflect that expansion. Yeah. And therefore, we are proposing to change the name to Eastern Africa Association of Prosecutors. So Eastern. That Eastern. Mm -hmm. So that it takes uh, into perspective those countries that uh, border Tanzania towards yeah. the south and also the countries that uh, border Kenya up mm -hmm. uh, and South Sudan. Uh, mm -hmm. South Sudan also is a member, you, you can on this other mm -hmm. side. So there is opportunity for expansion or growth, mm -hmm. but basically uh, we felt the name Eastern Africa will, uh, will be able to still maintain some. the brand mm -hmm. that the association has built for over 10 years now. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so Claudine, you are one of the founding members or rather longest serving member in the technical committee. Mm -hmm. And I just maybe want us to explain to the audience, what was the spirit behind uh, forming this EAP and are you achieving it now? It's been 10 years. Is there, are there milestones you'd want to talk about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. I think it's a good question, uh, considering where the association uh, has come from oh. in 2010, mm -hmm. when uh, those five DPPs signed the uh, constitution of the association in mm -hmm. Kampada, mm -hmm. and uh, where we are today with 11 members. Um, when you see, uh, I can uh, say that uh, when you see through the constitution of the association itself, you have uh, uh, the spirit behind the creation of this association. And uh, the spirit behind was uh, taken free of East African community itself whereby one of the objectives of this treaty was uh, uh, the strengthening of the cooperation among the member states uh, in order to achieve uh, other different objectives of uh, the association. And uh, one of the pillar of this uh, cooperation was legal and judicial cooperation among uh, member states. Mm -hmm. So uh, in 2010, as I said in Kampala, uh, the five DPPs, uh, Dwanda, uh, Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, and the Burundi, mm -hmm. uh, they sat and uh, came uh, uh, with an idea of uh, creating this association of uh, 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 prosecutors in order uh, to enhance that cooperation in judi uh, judicial matters, uh, more specifically, um, to, 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 to be able to prevent and combating crimes in the region. Mm -hmm. So that is, was the main idea behind the creation of this association. Mm -hmm. And um, when you talk about uh, the achievement, yeah. did you achieve that objective or not? I can say yes. Yes, you have. I can say yes, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, since 2010, um, the association has uh, uh, made a lot of effort in terms of cooperation among uh, uh, the NPS, National Public uh, 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 Prosecution Authorities mm -hmm. in different countries, yeah, yeah. Uh, but also uh, another um, big achievement in terms of capacity building. Mm -hmm. It's like every year we have been conducting uh, trainings, mm -hmm. workshops of uh, prosecutors, whereby different prosecutors from uh, um, institutions mm -hmm. or member countries have been sharing uh, experience, mm -hmm. good practices, yeah. uh, and uh, it has been good. It okay. has been good. And uh, the other thing is that through those meetings and uh, trainings, workshops, we have been able to create a kind of uh, informal a forum mm -hmm. just to facilitate the formal cooperation. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, 
I think the fact that today we have uh, 11 members yes, uh, that's from an five, achievement, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it's a good indicator yeah. of what has been uh, the growth of the association yeah. and uh, uh, the achievement of the association. Yeah. So I can say that really, yes, there's uh, still a way to go. There's mm -hmm. still a lot to do. Mm -hmm. But so far, we can say that really there's a good achievement mm -hmm. and a big achievement of the association. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. so Gitonga, in in I mean, when you talk about uh, uh, regional associations, you'd imagine that the la actually the last one in mind would be a prosecution of uh, a prosecution yeah. association, but you've managed to be to be at it for ten years. Uh, do you have are there like for example Kenya and Rwanda are there similarities in how you prosecute are there differences like when during the conference uh, one like I was telling you earlier one of those things that came out was plea bargain. Mm -hmm. So like, do you have plea bargain in Rwanda because in Kenya there is. And in just a bit, you'll tell us how it works in this, if it has worked very well in transnational and organized crimes. Yeah. Uh, so, so basically, the association uh, comes comes in to be able to, to help uh, national prosecuting authorities to be able to do their, their job of prosecuting within their legal framework as oh. they understand it best. Mm -hmm. So if uh, Rwanda, we, 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 we don't need to have our system the same way Rwanda mm, has. Mm. What we need is that Rwanda is able to pick the best they can pick from the, the national prosecuting authorities and what can apply in their country. And we also do the same. Mm. And we help them to be able to achieve their objectives. Mm. So if in the case of of uh, mutual legal assistance yeah. or extradition yeah. we are able to work together that uh, because remember mutual legal assistance is the evidence they need to prosecute their yes. cases yes. and extradition is dealing with more personalities who are required in a particular country maybe yeah. if they are needed in rwanda or they are needed in kenya yeah. so we assist them to get what they need mm -hmm. uh, through the those legal terms or those through legal procedures yeah. So if there is a procedure to be done in Kenya, we do it because we understand our system. Mm -hmm. If there is a procedure to be done in Rwanda, they will do it on our behalf yeah. because they understand their system. Yeah. But essentially, we are supposed to use the association as an opportunity to learn from one another. Okay. Uh, for instance, uh, there was a lot of questions about how Kenya is applying plea bargaining, yes. uh, diversion, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to deal with issues to do with asset recovery mm -hmm. or even in... Uh, quick disposal of, of, of cases and mm -hmm. it, it generated a lot, of, a lot of interest and there were questions that were being asked around how is it working and uh, are we seeing success in that yeah. and we were able to give examples of uh, uh, plea bargaining cases that we were able to recover money that had been lost yeah. uh, and also we had our deferred prosecution agreement uh, mm -hmm. example that we were able to give that they can be able to emulate and see how to to pick something from that. Mm. How does deferred prosecution work, now that you mentioned it? Uh, deferred prosecution agreement... Um, Sorry to take you back to class. <laughs> ...is something that uh, is still being explored mm -hmm. in terms of uh, uh, being understood by other countries. But it has been applied in, in countries like uh, the UK mm -hmm. and also other Commonwealth countries. Mm -hmm. And so you, you find that deferred prosecution is based on the decision of the DPP to make the decision to charge. Okay. So based on the fact that he makes the decision to charge and he's guided by, um, he's guided by the sufficiency of evidence to go forward and the public interest, mm. he can be able to look at a particular case based on uh, that maybe did not affect personal injury. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's uh, somebody made a mistake um, they, are, they, they are ready to make corrective measures mm -hmm. and maybe they are a corporate body and no one was hurt, there was yeah. maybe something that can be rectified mm -hmm. by payment of compensation or, or penalties. Okay. Then instead of wasting so much time in court, mm -hmm. you're able to do a deferred prosecution agreement. Yeah. The intention of deferred prosecution agreements is not to take away punishment mm -hmm. from individuals or corporates or to to circumvent the criminal justice system yeah. it, it it has to be something that is assessed based on uh, prudency and also uh, weighing the skills that how will you be able to achieve justice mm -hmm. the best mm -hmm. and that's why we have guidelines in place mm -hmm. to go to help us in making that decision on mm -hmm. what type of case 
qualified, qualified yeah. for deferred prosecution agreement. Yeah. Yes. So Claudine Gitonga has brought out things I just want to ask at once, but I think I'll, I'll try and, uh, <sighs> and, and, and just uh, scale them down. The first thing is mutual legal assistance. Mm -hmm. you, I bet uh, because after the genocide, you've really relied on uh, MLA to, uh, to, to deal with genocide fugitives. Yeah. Has this cooperation helped? Yeah, it did. It. Mm -hmm. it helped a lot because um, uh, when you see the number of uh, uh, cases, uh, genocide cases, we have tried uh, having uh, uh, relied on uh, other countries mm -hmm. through mutual legal assistance. We have a lot of cases. Okay. We have a lot of cases, yeah. and um, uh, most of them uh, 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 we, we, we use uh, those uh, extradition treaties mm -hmm. because in most of cases mm -hmm. it's not uh, the evidence that you were looking yeah. from uh, other countries yeah. but uh, fugitives yes. who were there. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, a lot of cases of extradition from European countries, African countries, mm -hmm. um, uh, from USA, Canada. We have a lot of cases. Okay. So I think that's... Uh, the, the MLI or uh, on the other side, uh, tradition, uh, treaties has really helped a lot. Yeah. Of course, we are still working on it because uh, we are still having uh, fugitives in different countries. Yes. We are still waiting for different uh, indictment that yeah. uh, has been uh, sent in different countries. Yeah. But so far, we have a, a, a considerable number of fugitives that have been extradited mm -hmm. or others have been deported from different countries. Yeah. Uh, using MLA, MLA and uh, yes, yeah, mm. okay, quite interesting. So, um, there's also something else you brought out about uh, deferred prosecution. Mm -hmm. And I remember earlier before the show started, you were talking about your Gashasha court, yeah, and how that has moved, it sort of moved from retributive mm -hmm. to now restorative. How has that been? Because I think when you look up Rwanda, even on the internet, the first thing you see are those courts, yeah, and the question is, what. What have you learned from it and what can we learn from it? Yeah. What is that one thing you want to tell Kenya? Kenya, this one you must learn from us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Gachacha courts, uh, 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 as you said, it's something you, you, one of the things you can find on the internet yes. when you are searching. Uh, you just write Rwanda, Rwanda and that comes up. You have Gachacha courts. Yes. Yeah. 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 Those courts have uh, really uh, helped us in, uh, in, uh, in uh, solving the problem of genocide cases. Mm -hmm. Because, um, as you might be aware, at the, uh, after the genocide, we had a lot of cases, mm -hmm. a big number of genocide cases that uh, had to be tried. Yes. And um, it has been realized that uh, when we went have to go through the normal uh, criminal justice system, it would take a lot Forever. of years. I think more than 100 <laughs> years yes. to try all of them. Yeah. But that is not the, the real or, or the only reason of Gachacha courts. Yeah. The other thing is that there was a need of reconciliation. Yes. Because with the genocide, the Dwandan society has been totally, totally destroyed. Yeah. And there is, was that need of uh, reconciled people. Mm. Because at the end of the day, we, 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 we needed to, 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 to live again together yeah. as a society. Yeah. So Gachacha court had helped not only to, to, to try those cases in a, in a, well, in a reasonable time, yes. if I may say, mm -hmm. but also and mostly it has helped for the reconciliation of Dwandans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's, a, it's one good example to see why we need to rethink, what we need to review our classic, if I can say, yes. Uh, a criminal justice system, yeah. where we are really focusing on a retribution part or aspect. And conviction. <laughs> and conviction. Um, I say when you analyze the way we handle or we deal with crimes, the, the classic criminal justice system is more uh, suspect-centered. Yes. Let's take an example. There's a crime that is, has been committed. You have uh, the offender, the suspect, you have the direct victim mm -hmm. and you have uh, the society yes. uh, which is also the victim yeah. as we, 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 we take it and we consider it in criminal matters. Yeah. So when you see the way you, we, we, we handle the, the, the problem, when you see the, uh, the, the way we, we deal with that crime, 
it's like we are going to take the society, which is represented by the public prosecution, yes. and then the suspect. But it's like most of the time we leave behind the victim. The victim. Mm. So the way things are, we go through the whole process. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, let's say we got the conviction of the person. The person is sentenced, let's say, to five, ten years of imprisonment. As a prosecutor, I'm satisfied because you I think got a uh, conviction. Yes, yes, I got a conviction. Yeah. But when you come back and see uh, uh, that person, that victim, who was supposed to be active and to take part in the whole process, yeah. he or she has been left behind. Yes. And sometimes you can ask yourself, is this uh, uh, conviction serving to heal the wound mm. of the victim? Is it serving to, to help him or her yeah. to heal from that? Mm. And I think there's a question yeah, there. Yes. The other thing is, sometimes you may have uh, a, a, an offense that has been committed. It's a, it starts being an affair or a conflict between two persons. Yes. But as you go through the whole process, it is becoming now a business, mm -hmm. a conflict of families. A community affair. Of a community. Yeah. So it's good to, 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 to have uh, the conviction of offenders. Mm -hmm. I'm not against that. Yeah. But I think it's time to, to look uh, uh, from the bigger perspective. Yes. The impact, the, the implications of the commission of the offense in the society. Yeah. Uh, the consequence of those uh, offenses on the, on, the, on the direct victims of yeah. the offenses. Yeah. But also the impact on the offenders themselves. Mm -hmm. Even because, the offenders. Yes, even themselves. So I think all those aspects, when you consider them, yeah. Uh, our Gachacha courts have as uh, have uh, taken into account all of those yeah, aspects. Yeah. All of those aspects. Mm. So uh, I think uh, you said what can tell to, to what, Kenyans. Yes, tell us. <laughs> I, I think it's a it's a it's a time to, as I said, to review our classic criminal justice system. Yes. Is it really serving mm. the community? Is it really serving? Uh, the interest of the whole community mm -hmm. or we just take one aspect of uh, of the, the whole problem yeah. uh, and we go till the end but there is a big part of the mm -hmm. problem that is left behind yes. the, 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 uh, in the community. Yes. So when uh, Kitonga was uh, talking about uh, 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 like those diversion programs yes. Do you have them I in think, Rwanda? Um, yes, mm -hmm. we, have, uh, we have it, we have um, um, in, in our criminal uh, procedure law, we have uh, something like uh, when the prosecutor uh, considers that uh, it is the best way of uh, handling the problems, yeah. of course for, the, for a certain category of offenses, yes. it's not allowed for all offenses, yeah. um, he or she can initiate mm -hmm. the, the, the amicable settlement between uh, the suspect and the, and the, the victim. Mm -hmm. So um, it has been uh, helping mm -hmm. because uh, I think it's better when two parties sit and decide on what to do, mm -hmm. on what, uh, how to handle yes. their conflict, yes. instead of uh, being... <laughs> Bringing the whole community Yes, the, the whole community involved. And, so yeah. the other thing, is, um, uh, as you have talked earlier about pre-bargaining, mm -hmm. we have it. It's very new because uh, it has been uh, uh, put into our laws uh, in 2019. Okay, that's really so it's very recent, mm -hmm. uh, but we are so happy that we have it. Okay. We are so happy that we have it. We believe that it's a big step that has been uh, made. Mm -hmm. So um, I think on that, we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, things to learn from Kenya because I know yeah. you have more advanced on yeah. that. Yeah. But it's good that you have, at least you have a legal uh, basis for that. Yeah. Um, so those are mainly the, 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 the mechanism that you have so far. Yeah. But I think we, we need more. We need more. We need more. Yeah, yeah. of course, uh, yeah. step by step. Mm. So Gitonga, what are those lessons that you would want to Kenya to learn from Rwanda? Uh, other, okay, at least uh, I'm happy we've uh, now, as a country, we have adopted uh, alternatives to prosecutions and alternatives to trial as uh, 
as a basis to deal with the criminal justice uh, yeah. system and not only uh, solely uh, dealing with the conviction as a means of success. Mm -hmm. um, although the challenge we have is that uh, members of the public are still saying we want people convicted. We, we <laughs> And I was just about to tell you that, I mean, you need to unschool us of our bias because when you see a prosecutor, we are seeing conviction, get it, get it, get it, you know, we yes. are hungry for it. Yes, yeah. uh, so mm -hmm. there, is, there, is, there is that uh, mm -hmm. a focus on conviction by members of the public, yeah. uh, but we always have to look at the at the ultimate goal. What is the uh, ultimate goal that we want? We want to be able to have a, a society that people live by the rule of law yeah. and that uh, the criminal justice system is not clogged mm -hmm. with cases that do not need to be there. Yeah. Hence the reason why we also have the decision to charge. Mm -hmm. And we also have to make sure that cases that can be caught out of that clock system mm -hmm. uh, are removed by other alternatives to prosecutions or alternatives to trial mm -hmm. so that the system only has cases that have priority yeah. so that we we use taxpayers money uh, to deal with priority cases okay. and we're able to address that yeah. uh, the judicial offices are not clogged with a lot of work uh, that can be dealt with uh, in another forum because remember the judicial officer still has to write down yeah. everything you still have to call the witnesses yeah. only for the case to be maybe withdrawn <laughs> at the end yeah. because of people agreeing which you should have done at the very at the beginning, beginning. Yeah. yes so there is there's a there's a bigger objective that will be served mm -hmm. when we continue to do this but yeah. if i may add that uh, one of the other strategies that we also are adopting uh, to ensure that uh, we punish um, in a way, uh, crime, other than going through a conviction, is asset recovery. Asset recovery yes. or what we call asset for future. Yeah. This is is uh, something that we are getting even the, uh, the association to try and pick up in their no own national prosecuting right. authorities. Yeah. And um, I remember one of the discussions we had is that most countries are still having the challenge Kenya has where we have cars rotting at police stations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and. Uh, those assets are not make, being because used. they were recovered and there's no process they were to, recovered yeah. or they were forfeited mm. and no one knows what to do with them they're yeah. just hanging there or they are waiting for the cases to 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 end and one of the recommendations uh, we were uh, I, I, we were making uh, to the association is that we need to start considering uh, when we make applications for forfeiture mm -hmm. we no longer say forfeited to the state we say forfeited to a particular state agency uh -huh. so that we give that agency the mandate to 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 recover that that motor vehicle yeah. and to use it well yeah. so that they are no longer just uh, parked sitting. out there and and also developing maybe guidelines or modalities how we can agree these instrumentalities can be sold mm -hmm. and money is kept in an interest earning account what is instrumentalities those Instrument the, the motor vehicle <laughs> the, the, the the vehicles or the vessels okay. which also means like ships or whatever yeah. used to commit a crime like okay. when you use a, a motor vehicle to transport drugs an instrument. that's an instrumentality ah, right. so we seize that motor vehicle mm -hmm. as an instrumentality mm -hmm. that motor vehicle can be sold yeah uh, when then we can decide later whether if it's going to be forfeited to a particular state agency mm -hmm the money will be there if, it, mm. if they say no we give you back your money and yeah. you can deal with the other challenges uh, for damages later later but we need to do this so that we can avoid the vehicles being clogged wasting the, away wasting away mm. and uh, no one is going to be able to mm. to use those resources this is kind of the um, best practices that we are trying to pick from one another okay yes all right so the eap was when i when i first interacted with the eap and even now the first thing I think of is illegal wildlife trade. But you're trying to explain to me something earlier that it is just not about illegal wildlife trade. So what is the wider mandate of the EAP? So as, as we were saying, it's, it's mostly how can the national prosecuting authorities cooperate better to address transnational organized crime? Because we already identified that transnational organized crime is no longer uh, border, border restricted. Mm -hmm. uh, people will... Uh, will do a crime in Kenya and then uh, go commit it in Rwanda or Burundi and or it could DRC. be a, yes or mm. it could be a whole network that yeah. is cooperating uh, down uh, and what we are saying is criminals are cooperating without being restricted by borders <laughs> for instance a criminal in Kenya is cooperating with the Rwandese 
and they have a memorandum of understanding yeah. that uh, a will, gentleman's agreement yes, a gentleman <laughs> will, we will deliver the drugs to you you sell you give us back our cut and there is a whole logistical arrangement uh, organized by criminals yeah. we are saying we also have to make sure we have uh, the same organized criminal i i make a phone call to rwanda yeah. they can follow it up for me on the other side uh, so you also moves, need to have the same network exactly the yeah. same chain of yeah. of, 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 of communication uh, co- uh, cooperation yeah. so that we also are as organized as them if not <laughs> even better yeah uh, in terms of, of of that cooperation yeah and so because crime is no longer tied by borders it means that we have to cooperate so that we are able to assist each other to mm. uh, meet our objectives yeah. so that we are able to cut the criminal networks yeah. and links yeah. that are trying to affect us across borders yeah. and uh, one of the emerging crimes that we found that is no longer a respect of borders mm-hmm. is cyber crime okay it's no longer limited yeah by borders it's in the skies it's in the skies <laughs> yeah. somebody somebody is uh, in kenya sitting in their house um, um doing a crime that is having an impact in rwanda yeah. or in burundi yeah. or in mozambique or in malawi and we need to be able to uh, they will need our help to get the source here and we'll also they will also need the evidence that is on the other side yeah. even as we decide which is the best jurisdiction to prosecute so, yeah. that i was actually surprised to see i don't know i don't think it arrived yet uh, mm-hmm. when uh, awf was presenting and you could see people mm-hmm. actually selling wildlife uh, illegal wildlife uh, what are they called commodities mm-hmm. on 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 the internet like somebody selling lion cubs and and cheetahs and stuff then i'm wondering okay then what do you do is there a framework for such kind of things when you when uh, when an io identifies somebody selling is do you have a framework like for kenya or for rwanda to get to such people or is it something that is still under being is still being developed to deal with cyber crime uh, for Rwanda, we have a special door on cyber crimes, yeah. and um, I think it's a good tool mm-hmm. because uh, uh, by now we cannot have uh, a single, a specific uh, cyber crimes. Yeah. Nowadays, it's like uh, every crime <laughs> can be committed through um, those uh, those uh, technological uh, means. Yeah. So we have uh, we have that law, but it's still, as he was saying we still need this uh, regional cooperation mm-hmm. because the way criminals are operating these days mm-hmm. it's like it's becoming really impossible for one prosecutor in Rwanda in Kenya in Tanzania to sit in his office yeah. and get a, a, a successful uh, um, prosecution of mm-hmm. a certain case because you may see a, a crime has been committed by someone who is uh, in Nairobi but uh, 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 he's uh, working through a network of a lot of people. Yeah. Some of them are in Rwanda, yeah. others are in Mozambique, others are somewhere else. Yeah. So um, there's a number of those offenses. Mm-hmm. Really, uh, 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 they are, they are, and they are. It's like they are ahead of us. <laughs> they are ahead of us. And you need to stop playing catch up. Really, you need to be ahead of them. We need to. We yeah. need to. So uh, it's good to have those laws, the legal uh, framework, mm-hmm. but uh, it's also more important to, to strengthen widening and deepening this cooperation mm-hmm. among institutions yeah. because uh, uh, we cannot uh, expect um, the, 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 the prevention and combating of those uh, crimes mm-hmm. without having cooperating with uh, other other um, uh, other. Uh, authorities, other prosecution authorities in different yeah. countries. Yeah. So we we do have a law, but still we do rely on uh, on um, on this cooperation. Yeah. Apart from that law, we have also the special units like uh, in uh, uh, the, the the organ charge of investigation. They have a special unit uh, that is also um, contributing a lot to the way you handle those uh, those uh, uh, crimes because there's a kind of uh, specialization mm-hmm. in the way we do it mm-hmm. but still we we we, we are just <laughs> relying yeah. on the cooperation to get evidence to get those criminals from yeah. different countries yeah yeah I, I think it's about time each country or the association works on a legal framework for cyber crime mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. of the way it's evolving fast that's mm-hmm. true yeah um but I wanted to add that uh, on on top of what uh, Claudine was saying is that we are not really in a bad place Mm. as we speak because we Mm. have 
our national laws yeah. which uh, cover cyber crimes mm -hmm. and the, the association members also have similar laws mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily by that name yeah. the same name yeah. but they have it and that's what you need what you will need for purposes of mutual legal assistance mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. is um, or extradition is perhaps indicating mm -hmm. that the, the, the person uh, the assistance you're seeking mm -hmm. is also an offense in your country mm -hmm. Therefore, there is like dual criminality yeah. between in Kenya or in Rwanda, mm -hmm. and that is that is already happening. Yeah. So each country has its own mutual legal assistance law, okay. which we we try and share with one another what the requirements are. That's why it's so important to have the association, mm -hmm. so that uh, I can send my mutual legal assistance request informally through Claudine. Yeah. Uh, she tells me, okay, this you've done this, okay. Yeah kindly do this other it doesn't one doesn't have to get lost uh, yeah. yes mm. so do this do this uh, correct this correct this yeah. it's like sending a draft letter in advance mm -hmm. so i send a oh, draft yeah. letter to for her to to, to look at she tells yeah. me this is okay this is proper language mm. uh, if i'm trying to look for a, a similar offense on their side and i'm not finding it I, I can share her that this is offense that has been committed. Yeah. Do you how have do a similar you, offense yeah. in your country and mm. how does it look like? Mm. She shares it. So by the time I'm sending it to her, it's almost complete and it's just a formality yeah. uh, because we've already had it, we've already started having conversation with her yeah. uh, on how to go about it. So mm. there's our mutual legal assistance law that she may need to comply with and I will help her. Mm -hmm. And they have their mutual legal assistance law that I need to ask her how to comply with it if I am not ah, aware. Okay. So that she, the mutual legal assistance is to assist me to get evidence that she has yeah. in her country and for her, for me to help her with evidence that I have in my country. Mm. And additionally, there are other tools that we use. There are international treaties mm -hmm. that also provide the, the objective mm -hmm. or the duty to cooperate mm -hmm. among countries mm -hmm. and how to be able to do so through mutual legal assistance. Yeah. So like if it's a narcotics act, you can have the United Nations uh, conventions against uh, um, yeah. uh, organized crime mm -hmm. that we can use or any other uh, United Nations con con convention or the AU uh, conventions or treaties. And yeah. then we have the bilateral agreements that we may have between the individual countries that we can also be able to use mm -hmm. and then you have the association mm -hmm. so there are many covers that we can be able to use yeah. and other regional uh, networks you can use to bring in the aspect that we must cooperate in mm -hmm. this aspect mm -hmm. uh, and also you you must be able to remember that um, in addition of uh, these regional networks and uh, regional cooperation mm -hmm. that we have to assist us mm -hmm. Uh, we, 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 we have the opportunity that we can be able to discuss mm -hmm. ways to simplify processes um, uh, through informal networks and then we have the investigators. Yes. Our investigators are, uh, who do the work also have their own regional networks that we can be able to oh, use yeah. mutual legal assistance to get like Interpol as well yeah. that uh, some of our countries are already members mm -hmm. of and other regional police uh, networks that yeah. can be used to be able to get the information we need yeah. uh, for purposes of mutual legal assistance. You make it sound so easy to be a prosecutor in this time or to work in the criminal justice system in this time. I'm wondering what, what, what used to happen even before this association. You had to get into a bus and go to Rwanda to sort yourself out, for example. How would you do it? <laughs> How did you, they you, do it? You, you travel by bus or by... Uh, <laughs> you by, get yourself there to you get... get there, then yeah. you discuss, you negotiate, but still you need yeah. some sort of reciprocity yeah. kind of agreement. Yeah. I'm just wondering how difficult that was then, because now when you talk about it, it sounds quite important to have an association such as this yeah. one. Uh, so, Claudine, I'm just wondering, uh, Rwanda of late has just become... I was telling you, maybe you're taking away a tourist from us, but then a hub for tourists, a travel destination for most, mm -hmm. and your national parks are growing. And your, yeah, yes. So as you're attracting these very nice visitors, are you seeing a rise in the bad ones as well? Is illegal wildlife trade something now you're looking at because of now you expanded the tourism mandate? Mm, I, I can't say no. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, we have some cases mm -hmm. of... Uh, of uh, uh, those with life uh, uh, cases, but I think uh, I cannot say that they are related to the yeah. <laughs> the increasing of uh, of uh, of uh, tourism activities yeah. in the country. Yeah. Um, I think so far, yes, we have a law. We have uh, a special law dealing with those cases. 
uh, there are not so many as uh, in Kenya mm -hmm. or Tanzania. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we do have them, but I can't mm -hmm. say that really there is uh, a link uh, between those cases and, yeah. uh, and um, uh, the tourism activities. Okay. No, they yeah. are not related. All right. Mm. Um, something the yeah. South Sudan, uh, South Sudan counterpart brought up uh, during the, the, the training workshop was on uh, witness protection. Is there a framework? Because um, like I was discussing with him that time was that you need people in this process, citizens like you and I, mm -hmm. or like me, say, and Mike, for example. So an, an, an illegal one like say, occurs in the communities in which we live in, meaning the routes that are being discussed by AWF and traffic and all those other people, partners, are the roots, and it's where we live, it's our communities, it's our villages. Yeah. So um, if I see wildlife tasks, uh, elephant tasks going through my village, is there a framework to protect me in Kenya or in Rwanda as, as a witness to this crime? Should I come and say I've seen and they've gone through this way? Because then the, the success of this also depends on the communities where these things take place. So is there, is there a framework for witness protection? I would say that um, each country, we, we, each member state of the association should, should be able to make that effort to have um, a witness protection law. In fact, one of the things that we identified uh, as we were trying to discuss uh, our, our strategic plan going forward is that we need to check, have a monitoring system mm -hmm. where we all have laws that will enable us um, operate effectively so that we can avoid gaps yeah. in countries like for instance penalties we were saying penalties if kenya is punishing one offense for 20 years yeah. and rwanda it's in rwanda it's seven years there's yeah. a gap somewhere yeah. Yeah. means they can choose to be prosecuted in rwanda yeah. because they'll get seven years yeah. and then the issue of um, um a trophy acqui uh, acquit or a trophy uh, convict comes in in the sense that they'll be able to say I've been convicted of this yeah. or I've been acquitted in this offense yeah. in another country yeah. so you can't it's the same facts mm -hmm. uh, so basically that harmonization of laws yes. in terms of ensuring that we have laws that are able to help us combat yeah. transnational yeah. crimes yeah. is something that we've identified as an issue yeah. so you might find some countries do not have witness protection mm -hmm. laws mm -hmm. but in kenya we do have a witness protection law mm -hmm. and we do have a witness protection agency yeah. therefore if rwanda had a concern about a particular witness we can be able to assure them that we have the mechanisms to protect that witness okay and we can be able to put them in a witness protection program mm -hmm. uh, and and the prosecutor in this case plays a very vital role yeah. in not only making the application uh, as a as a in between the agency and the and the potential witness but also to to pass on the information that the evidence that witness is going to be able to give is going to be very crucial towards mm -hmm. the conviction or the prosecution of that particular case. Yeah. Yes. Do you have a witness protection? Uh, no, no. We don't yeah. have a witness protection law, mm -hmm. but um, we do have a witness protection unity. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. At our office, yeah. uh, even uh, from the, the, uh, the level of the Dwanda the Investigation Bureau, they yeah. do have. So uh, uh, it's something general, not only yeah. for the witnesses in such uh, special cases of wildlife, uh, environmental and for whatever, but uh, for other cases, okay. whatever they need that kind of protection, um, it's provided okay. at any level where they are, at the level of investigation, at yeah. the level of prosecution, yeah. even in the court. Mm -hmm. um, and also uh, the criminal procedure law uh, provide for a, a kind of protection but that it has at the level of the court when mm -hmm. the case have been uh, taken to the court okay. it's uh, mm -hmm. it's an obligation of the judge to take necessary measures to protect any witness uh, uh, that needs to be protected mm -hmm. so um, uh, we don't have such a such a special law but, but you have yes unit. we have a unit and so far, it has been serving uh, quite well okay. for different uh, uh, witnesses in different cases. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So just to, because um, you are the lawyers, does um, can it operate um, solo without a whistleblower protection framework? Can a witness protection agency are they two different things? 
whistleblower and a witness protection are they two different things i'm just trying to understand uh, where the distinction is okay so uh, they do have a dist distinction yeah. because uh, whistleblower is is referring to somebody an insider mm -hmm. uh, who comes out to say that they 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 blow the whistle on an offense that is happening in a in an institution that he works in yes. or that is mm is -hmm. his familiar with so like for instance if there is an and a prosecutor or a staff member who has witnessed an offense happening within the organization yeah. his whistle and he says he reports it his whistle blown he's a whistle blower okay. so therefore he's a unique person because he is likely to face reprimand from the same organization yeah, he works. Yeah. He could be fired, he could be moved around, he could be persecuted. So a whistleblower uh, protection law is supposed to help this person not lose his livelihoods or to be punished for because, doing the right things yeah. because mm -hmm. he reported. Yeah. Because it doesn't mean that what he's saying is the truth. His work is to report, then somebody else does the investigation. Find out, yeah. And he shouldn't be punished because mm. of that. Yeah. So that's the uh, that's whistleblower. And yeah. uh, witness protection is a person who now is going to give evidence in a particular case okay. and needs to be protected because it's been identified that the threats yeah. to their life yeah. or in, uh, injury to their person that is 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 eminent or is likely. Okay. Uh, yes. But okay. there must be a witness to a case. Okay. Then, and they have been identified as a witness. And they need to, need to be protected. Yes. You see, you learn you learn something every other day on mm -hmm. this show. I don't think we are about to end the show, but I don't want us to end without first talking about corruption. It is something, It is a, it, we call it a dragon here in Kenya. It, mm -hmm. And it fights viciously. But when you read reports, say from the World Bank and other reports I've been reading, is that Rwanda has really been um, quite uh, performing very well mm -hmm. in the fight against corruption. What is that thing that you think we are missing here or in other countries? Because when you talk about an African country, you must speak about corruption. But then now when you speak about corruption in the Rwanda context, we're talking about success stories. Mm -hmm. So what, what is that that you've done that we are not doing? <laughs> Well, um, I think I, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not really able to do yeah. or to say what is missing in yes. Uganda or any country. Yeah. But what I know is uh, what happened in uh, my country. Yes. Um, I, I can say that uh, the first thing was uh, the political will. Okay. Yes, that is, because uh, when you see uh, before we had laws, before we had institutions, before we had. Uh, any other tool that has helped to combat corruption, we, we had that uh, political will from the highest level okay. of combating corruption and, uh, and preventing it by all means. So uh, apart from that, uh, uh, we have uh, laws. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have laws, we have uh, uh, institutions, mm -hmm. um, like uh, not only those uh, formal criminal uh, the, the, the institution is in, within the criminal chain process, mm -hmm. but you have like uh, the Ombudsman Office that is uh, working uh, a lot in uh, that area of combating corruption. Mm -hmm. We have um, uh, different agencies, but also we have a awareness campaign, if I can say that. People have been, uh, uh, there have been a kind of sensation, mm -hmm. and it's like everyone, every single citizen knows that uh, whenever he sees any sign of corruption, they have to report it. What, what makes them report? Because what would make me report? What's in it for me if I report? Uh, <laughs> I think uh, the, there's not any other, they're not paid for that. No. But it, there's that kind of, uh, uh, I think it's a sense of patriotism, if yes. I can say that. Yes. Because they know they have been, all of us, all of us being uh, us as prosecutors, yeah. judges, and others who are in the criminal uh, justice chain, but even the, 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 the other citizens, mm -hmm. all of us have been uh, uh, given that information of how the corruption is really very harmful to the whole life of the, 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 oh, the country. Now through the sensitization campaign. Yes. So uh, I think that is uh, what I said that there's a kind that sense of yeah. uh, patriotism. Yeah. Because uh, when I'm, uh, I or any other citizen is going to, to just to report that case of uh, of um, corruption, yeah. of course I'm not expecting any uh, uh, any 
reward or something else but first of all I, I think I'm serving my country yes I'm serving my country so it is something that has uh, uh, been so useful because when you see how even the, the few cases that are still there are being reported on a daily basis yeah. by the sim simple citizens by the officials by the uh, investors by everyone it's like it has been an obligation it has been a, 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 a duty so for everyone duty. yes to to report it so uh, that is uh, uh, um, working together with legal framework institutional yeah. framework just to combat this uh Corruption, <laughs> this corruption I like menace. what you say because yeah. I think honestly that that corruption ought to be fighting corruption ought mm -hmm. to be a patriotic duty yeah that you should all take it up and maybe that is a missing link here in Kenya we leave it for the Gitongas, the ODPP. Mm -hmm. We leave it for the EACC, and then we see no role as citizens. Yeah, yeah. I think when it is like that, uh, I don't know if uh, really those uh, uh, prosecution, investigative yeah. uh, uh, agencies can be able to work alone without the involvement of the whole citizens. Yeah. Because they are the ones who give that corruption. Yes. They were, Actually, the citizens are the first victims of that. Yeah. Because you can imagine when there's someone who is uh, having a case in a prosecution. Yeah. Someone who doesn't earn even uh, uh, 500 US dollar per month. Mm -hmm. But when he comes for what something which is his right, mm -hmm. you ask him to pay like a thousand, mm -hmm. two uh, uh, thousand US dollar for having given what was his right mm -hmm. so that is uh, uh uh that is so sad yeah it's yes, so sad it so uh that is why i said it is almost impossible for all those we may have good roles we may have uh, very efficient institutions yeah. but as long as we don't have that sense of citizens to to take the ownership yeah. of this fight of this uh, 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 um, fight against corruption, mm -hmm. it, it can't work. It can't work. It can't work. Yeah. So I think it's it's a, a very uh, important component yes. in the whole process. In the whole process yeah. of fighting corruption. Mm -hmm. And I like that. I don't know, do you have anything to say, Gichung, about how we fight corruption, how they fight corruption, and maybe some lessons we can borrow? I think uh, the first thing we did right was to prioritize corruption as a, as a, as a major uh, a strategic Crime. focus even. yeah oh, strategic yeah. focus for even the odpp and um, and for the country yeah. in terms of, uh, of of addressing it that's that's identification and uh, and uh, recognition is very important yeah. and then the agency is now taking the the initiative by creating specialized divisions yeah. or units and investigators also doing the same at the directorate of uh, criminal investigations, the EACC yeah. being created and being empowered with yeah. the, the financial muscle to be able to, mm. to undertake it. All this has helped in the success that and of the success of the cases. But most important, political will. Mm -hmm. The political will to fight corruption has really helped in terms of how far we've managed to come. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Kenyans uh, notice, but we've really taken a lot of high level people to court yes. uh, and and many of them we've been able to freeze their property or money that they had acquired illegally yes. for purposes of uh, uh, of ensuring that we take away any benefit of crimes that they, they may have taken yeah. up there is of course more we can do yeah. but uh, i find that kenyans uh, uh, their standards in the sense that they don't want to acknowledge even the efforts that have been made and how far we've we don't come. celebrate our gains. yeah yeah the, the gains that we've made and how far we've come uh, the people we are able to take to court now that we were not able to take to court say 15 years ago yeah. we can now take uh, our cabinet secretaries to court governors to court and we have a chance of winning and getting convictions mm. uh, that we we never had we need before. to recognize that yes yes and let me not forget that mm. also the aspect of having anti-corruption courts is a major win in the yeah. in the strategies that we've adopted in yeah. in, in the fight against corruption yes. and asset recovery. recovery. Yes, yes. Uh, I think I will I will still insist on the role of the citizen, but maybe you can't really overemphasize that here. Uh, Claudine, again for the last time now, boda boda. I don't know what you call them in Rwanda. How have you been able to to because you watched there's a feature on Citizen TV, uh -huh. uh, one of our TV stations when uh, they went to I don't know what they're doing in Rwanda. I think there was a big conference. 
And so one of the side stories they did was about how Rwanda manages border border. I mean, I was in awe when I saw lights going red and all of them stopped. So in Kenya, when lights go red, they all move like insects in different directions. You don't know where someone is coming from. So, and, and now we are faced with a problem because some two, three weeks ago, mm -hmm. a lady was assaulted so bad. I don't know if they watched on the internet yeah, and she was I a diplomat. Them. And so they sort of uh, came out as a law unto themselves, rogue, I mean, always. So people are calling for regularization of the sector. I don't know how you have done it. And again, maybe we are drawing too much from you today, but <laughs> what can we do that you have done that, that can... Because so, you know, it's a source of living for people. We don't yeah. discount that. And a lot of young people. And of course, there's an infiltration maybe of gangs and all that. But then there has to be some way mm -hmm. to regulate them, especially when it comes to traffic. How have we done that? Ah, uh, boda boda. We don't call them boda boda. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, I, I got this name from uh, Kenya, oh, yeah. and I think Tanzania also, they call them Boda Boda. Yes. Uh, they're just motorcycles. But we do have a dog. You are modest. It's, <laughs> yes. it's Boda Boda a Swahili name or what? I don't even know where it came from. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we do have them. Uh, and especially in Chigari, they are not. Okay. They are not. Most of the people, they use them. Yeah. Because uh, I think they are more practical, yes. especially in the peak hours with traffic and everything. But of course, we don't have the same traffic as, <laughs> as Nairobi. So we do have them. Uh, really, I don't recall any incident in the way they, are, uh, they operate, operate. Mm -hmm. being uh, that kind of, uh, of um, offenses, mm -hmm. uh, criminality or the way of using roads uh, yeah. <laughs> with other other users. Yes. Um, of course, we have uh, a regulatory agents, so it's all regulated. It's all regulated. They do for, have... For um, traffic in general or for Boda Boda? We or have for, uh, for, yeah. for traffic in general, but even those motorcycles, they do have their, like, a, a kind of a union. Ah, okay. Yes, where they, they, they meet, they have their rules, they have regulations. Okay. Um, they have like a, a, I can call it a code of conduct for oh, them. Good, yeah. So if anyone uh, uh, breaches it, there's uh, a kind of sanctions. Mm -hmm. But there is even that traffic law in general mm -hmm. that regulates all of us, uh, okay. the users of the yeah. road, being the, the, the those uh, motorcycles uh, yeah. drivers, uh, and everyone. Okay. So there's no really any incident. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, those that the legal framework and that institutional one, they are really effective to to, to prevent yeah. all kind of uh, such scandals. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have yeah. craziness. Oh well, yeah. so uh, thank you so much. And honestly, has the cost of living gone up in Rwanda? Yes. Our cooking oil With is our, up there. Everything. <laughs> I think it's common everywhere. Oh, yeah? yeah. Yeah. I remember. I remember. Uh, like a, a few days after the Russia yes. and Ukraine yes. uh, stories, I went uh, somewhere and I have found even the parking fee as it is. And I said, "Oh, you people." <laughs> So I think it's a, uh, it's uh, I think it's a, uh, it's normal. Yeah, fuel the, has the, gone up. Everything, fuel, uh, whatever the market. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a, uh, I think that is uh, the the impact of globalization. Um, oh yes, I was about <laughs> to say transnational. Yeah. I mean, everything is now transborder. Mm -hmm. We can't stop the impact True. of it. Yes. True. So um, mm -hmm. I just want to quickly appreciate Luke Guide, uh, one of our very uh, common guys on uh, on on the social media who's asking questions, but uh, most of them are quite local. And look, guys, um, maybe we'll not be able to answer all of this now. Like now he asks, is there any difference between Kenyan law and Rwandan law? Of course there is. Yeah, so some of the questions we won't be able to answer them today. Um, so he wants to know differentiate justifiable instances of using firearm in Kenya and in Rwanda. Quite specific question. Again, uh, mm -hmm. the aim of today, I feel like addressing Luke. So Luke, uh, the aim of today's show was to talk about regional cooperation and not really to dissect uh, specific laws, but we really appreciate that you are here with us to ask. He asked a very interesting question. In Rwanda, is there IPOA? IPOA is... Um, the Independent Police Oversight Authority. It's like a yeah. unit for investigating police misconduct. Uh, no. So ours is called IPOA. It's it's an initial, an acronym for the for uh, that place. Yeah. yeah. No, 
we, we, we just have the national police and uh, that's all. We don't have a private uh, one. Oh, <laughs> okay. And you can see it must be civilian uh, led. Yeah, the it's idea. Yeah. There's yes. always a police unit that investigates other policers, but now this is a civilian body that investigates other yeah. police officers. No, 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 no. We don't have. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, thanks again for watching. So that is just about it. Uh, look, uh, we appreciate that you've been with us. He was asking question. I think this is Facebook or YouTube. I'm not sure, but that's just about it. And I want to close the show. And to it's been an hour. I always say you think an hour is too long until you start talking, and then you discover that uh, it's quite yeah. a short time. But I hope you've enjoyed our show. We've enjoyed having you. On I the did, show. Uh, and uh, uh, I always enjoy when I meet our. My fellow prosecutors yes. from the region because yes. uh, it's like i was talking to jitonga when we were on our way coming that uh, every time we meet i learn a new thing <laughs> every time i need, need yeah. uh, learn a new thing yeah. so i think uh, uh it was a privilege yeah. uh, to yes, be hosted yes, her and uh, to share with you with uh, chitonga yeah. I, I again learned yes. so thank you so much thank you thank yeah. you so much as well jitonga yeah. i hope again because you'll come back that you've enjoyed today's show. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for having me. No parting shot? You're good? I, I am good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nowadays I find myself having long parting shots, but I do not want to annoy yeah. Mike because of time. Yeah, we've run through, uh, um, I mean, to extend our time beyond one hour. Mm -hmm. So I want to come to the end of the show and thank you so much for being with us. I hope you enjoyed. As you can see, I had enough questions for Rwanda. I was excited to have Claudine on the show. And of course, as always, to have the perspective from ODPP like Bitonga has brought it. Uh, so this has been a great week, a great week of learning, a great week of unlearning other things. And today I've learned that uh, the fight against corruption ought to be driven also from a citizen perspective. Otherwise, we depend too much on the law and we get nothing. Uh, we don't achieve so much. So let's all work towards uh, fighting corruption and that it is possible for a regulated and orderly border border uh, industry like Rwanda has one, she has confirmed. And a lot of things has been said. So you can go back and just listen to what has been said. EAP, according to Gitonga, is growing wider. And of course, that means it calls for a rebrand, which is going to come. They'll tell us when. But there's so much that uh, the Association of Prosecutors can do beyond illegal wildlife trade because now the cyber security and transnational and organized crime has gone uh, beyond. Uh, I mean, you cannot just uh, talk about wildlife only. There's so much that goes on in the dark, what's called dark net, dark web, as we were told the other day. So yeah, I can't summarize everything, but I want to appreciate you. I want to wish you an awesome Friday, a restful weekend, and then let's catch up in the week uh, to see what other topic we shall have for you. God bless you.